Joey's here. You got her. Yeah, I've got her. Hi, Joey. Randy, I need going? to talk to you. I read the script last night, and not only is Sophia walking all over my lines, now she's got all the lines. What is she doing? Screwing the director or something? She yeah, just came down this last night. It's completely not okay. We need to talk about this. It's not in the contract. Sorry about that. The change just came down. But we need to do something about it, though. You know, I'm not doing the show. Just do the show. So thought this would look so fantastic on you. She would. It's a piece of shit. It's cool. Did you get your segment breakdown for today? Shiatsu or Swedish? A Swedish. Yeah, did you get a Magic Jordan? Seg uh, well, it's James Worthy. We went with James Worthy. Oh, yeah, and the uh, meat pies or something? Meat puppets. Oh, meat puppets. Jackie, how many times do I have to tell you I'm not wearing any more short skirts on this show? Okay, all right, let's go. One more. How about this? You know what? That is the worst color on her. It just, it's bad. It's really bad. I wouldn't even do it. Hey. I like those. Well, Seth's wearing these. But what do you mean? What? Well, no, she's this is she's, good for you. So. Yeah, that and those. Now these. You well, I, who's in wardrobe first? Who's here? She's getting her makeup done. Give me those pants. Well, let's figure it out. No, let's, let's figure it out. what? The figuring out is over. So first, I go into uh, to the wardrobe room, and Jackie hands me all these hideous clothes that she expects me to wear, and I'm not wearing them. And I finally get to the thing I want to wear, and of course, of course, Sophia gets to wear it. And, you know, she gets to get her makeup done first, she gets to get all these lines that are turned her way. I don't know what's going on, but of course she's probably talking shit about me, too, you know. Right, Roz? Right, Roz? Oh, hi, Soph. Hi. Mr. Soph. drive a Mercedes, a big fancy Mercedes. See, I got a little dough, never had very much dough before, and uh, I kind of charged into the store and said, let me have the biggest, blackest, shiniest, most expensive car you got. And they were like, uh, please, sir, could you uh, exit out the back door? I hate driving, I hate cars, and cars to me are sort of a metaphor for all the evil in this city and just everything that disgusts me and sucks my soul out. I did for Deborah Harry is, uh, is a large painting uh, portraying the traumas in her life and a, a, a lot of situations in her life that uh, in some respects created her personality. Hi, I'm Deborah Harry and I'm here talking to you on High Octane about Robert Williams and his uh, painting that he made of me. I guess the main title of this painting is The Proposed Mystery Spheres and Terrifying Experiences of Debbie Harry. The, the, the primary center of the picture concentrates on uh, a, a violent scenario of her w with this monstrous guy. Apparently, D D Debbie Harry was out wandering one night through New York, going home after clubs had closed. And I had on these awful platform shoes, and my feet were blistered, and I couldn't walk, and I was probably a little loaded. And a little white car pulled up and offered her a ride. and uh, She turned it down, and then the car went around the block, and the guy came back by and out offered her another ride. She decided to get in the car with the guy, and got in the car with the guy and slammed the door, and she noticed as soon as she shut the doors, there was no door handles or window cranks, and she was trapped inside. So she asked the guy to pull over, and uh, the, the guy just laughed at her. So the, the guy had left two inches of window open at the top to talk to her in the first place. So when, but what she did was she just reached for that crack in the window, and popped the door handle out, and fell out on the street. Years later, she found out the guy she was with was Theodore Bundy serial murder and she escaped death so this is the scenario in this big painting is her with theodore bundy and her falling out the car doors a lot of people look at my pictures and they don't like them but they can't get them out of their mind and they'll hunt them they'll hunt up other ones um i have six robert williams paintings after a while they'll buy one of my books and then they're really hooked somehow i got a hold of one of his books it'll start a cycle of having to find these, these damn paintings and i just said well i don't know what i have to do but i gotta do it to get to get the paintings it just clicked with me i i i felt like he was like uh like a modern day hieronymus bosch he's whacked and 
He's funny and he's witty. This particular painting here deals with your standard mad doctor combining a woman with a gorilla. It relates to my world, you know, I, I connect with him. I've made love everywhere in an automobile. The, the fenders, the trunk, the rumble seat, the front seat, the back seat, the top and the hood. There's custom cars and there's hot rods. Now, uh, uh, a custom car is for picking up girls. A hot rod is for keeping girls off your mind. This car here was a hot rodder before, it was a hot rod car before World War II. Say, before I was born, hot rod teenagers were driving this thing, dragging up and down the streets that you're very familiar with. This is a, this is a moving Southern California landmark. We'll be right back with more nitro burning, fire breathing, tire scorching, six second money car, high octane! This next painting is obviously about a man's struggle with um, his, his love for his mother and his own sexuality and, uh, you know, subconscious psyche over dealing with the world and the reality of automobile racing. His prices were skyrocketing, and I couldn't afford the painting. I had all these watches. I'd collected these watches, you know. So I sold all my watches to get this one painting, and they said that, well, I couldn't have it after I sold all my watches, and I almost strangled somebody. I, I, had, I had actually... Uh, develop Robert Williams itis fever. It's my painting on the front. That's my painting on the other front. And it's uh, the definitive history of hot rod music. Starts off in 1946. With boogie woogie music goes into country and western rockabilly very early rock and roll goes into forms of surf hot rod music early rat think uh, big daddy roth music he made four or five records and it ends with punk rock Na the name of the record is chrome smoking fire this record is off the market you can't even get it the thing about sex and violence is it's a wonderful form of energy you know you can almost start a car battery start a car <laughs> on, just on uh, the energy that comes off gratuitous sex and violence. Hi, I'm Dixie Evans, and uh, way back, I was the Marilyn Monroe of burlesque. I'm also the exact same age as Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Who's our next guest? Anna Sweet. Who's that? Designer. What kind of a designer? A fashion designer. <laughs> we're here in the back room at Anna Sweet, and we're gonna go inside the store. I'm gonna cut all this out, because I'm really stupid, but... Come with me. Anna Sweet is our, um, one of our favorite designers. She has a lot of cool inspirations. Um, she knows a lot about old movies and photography and rock and roll. Sansa a little shopping because she's in a rock band called Tron. She's a rock star. She's a diva. She needs a clothes to go for it. So this is Rosanna. And why do you like Alan's clothes? Because how can you not like something like this? Oh, here's Anna now. What are your uh, inspirations for designing clothes? Um, well, every season, like, I kind of choose, like, a new sort of inspiration. Um, this past collection that you see here, I went back to, like, all my little girl fantasies about fashion. It was to always wear tiaras. Hi, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> I love this hat on you. I have fancy wearing uh, only dog hats. You could walk in to, to a room with your head down and still have a face on. This is the little A-line sports dress. And it's, it's my favorite shape this season, the A-line dress. And Sophia has on the fake monkey fur jacket. Lately, like, I've been thinking a lot about, like, the 70s, I guess. And there, and there, were, there were all these incredible European films in the 70s, like The Damned and Death in Venice, like all the Visconti, which were very decadent and also, like, very, very lavish and opulent. And I, I love all that. And you don't see films like that anymore. Sometimes it's fun to look back to see what what 
inspiration came from before because you can always interpret it in a new way. I mean, I guess that's what I do a lot with yeah. with my designs. I think that uh, the more fantasy that's involved in, in dressing, especially when you're young, the better. Because when you get old, you can't do it anymore. They think you look crazy. <laughs> so you might as well do it when you're young. What's that? Is that its tail? What's that all about? It's pierced. Well, first of all, we start off with uh, about 100 feet of chain wrapped in the front through the hood through the frame. Main concern for the driver is padding. All the glass comes out of the car. We use a wire mesh windshield. Basically, you just don't want any glass flying in your face. Destruction Derby! I'm Tracy Elmer. How are you doing, Tracy? Hello, Sean. What is um, your idea of the sexiest car? Like, your a car that really turns you on? Well, I have a... For my 30th birthday, my husband gave me a black E-type Jag, 1971. <whistles> Twelve-cylinder. It's like a big black penis, this car. And that's a sexy car. When the girls at my show saw I bought this car, they goes, Oh my God, it's a dick on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's a, it's a dick on wheels. You know what, if I could buy an electric car in L.A., I would. I, they were available to me, and not these silly things that you hear Ed Begley Jr. is driving right. that he has to plug in for 48 That's hours. Cool. If, if they had an electrical car, electric car available, I'd give up my a Range Rover, my Jag, everything, because I'm sick of the air in L.A. Yeah. Get, get an electric car together, guys. Can't breathe. Can't no, it's horrible. Beverly Hills from here? Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, it's not too far from here. Um, I'll tell you what. Get my head out of here! Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Get out of the
Thurston's Alley. gentlemen, welcome once again to Thurston's Alley. The wind is kind of blowing uh, some somewhat rank odors. We love the smells of New York. I'm here with the beautiful, vivacious Sylvia Miles, one of my favorite actresses of all time. I remember seeing Midnight Cowboy. You were like the one character in that film that I knew was really real as far as coming from New York. Uh, somebody I know, you know. You know him? Yeah, beat it. Were you into punk rock when it was starting out in the 70s? You know, New York Dolls even? Going yeah, I, I, as a matter of fact, you know, I mean, he's the... Oh, I shouldn't say this, because <laughs> he's my only disappointment. David Johansson. Oh, because of uh, the Buster Point next yes, to Yes, <laughs> because it's like, you know, yeah, well. he found a, a gimmick, you know? We all have a gimmick once in a while, but, you know, you can't stay with it for too long. Otherwise, your life becomes pretty trite. But you are, uh, in a sense, the, a, a, a true purveyor of the high-octane aesthetic that we're going for here. I have no fear. I'm not afraid of hiding things or not being myself or, not, or withholding things. I'm not even afraid of looking stupid because I figure, God, somebody else got to look more stupid than me, so why should I be afraid? Right? Right on. And on that note, I keep on laughing, keep on reaching for the stars, rocking and a-rolling, strutting and a-strolling, looking for some barbecue. Anything at the What's high octane to you? High octane means pure adrenal and speed. It's like nitrous oxide coming right out of your ass. Wow. <laughs> Speeding dolly shots down the drain. <laughs> yeah. I was born with high octane. High octane. I, I would like to be a high octane actor. Saturday Night Live is coming up next at Comedy Central, a variety show without any dummies. <laughs> well, no wooden ones, anyway. 